Welcome, dear viewers, to this webinar brought to you by Rosenbauer Online Product Days. Today's subject has played an important role in fire departments around the world for many years and is only becoming more and more important. And yet, it is not talked about enough. If we had to find a title for today's subject, it might be networking and operations. At Rosenbauer, we call it logic control system or LCS for short. With us today to tell us what LCS is all about and what it can do is Severin Wiesmuller, Product Manager for Human Machine Interface and Electronics at Rosenbauer. Hello, Severin. Hello, Clemens. Severin, human machine interface has become an important phrase nowadays to define the interface between a machine and its operator. That's exactly right. We all know that humans and machines do not always speak the same language, although a lot has changed in this regard in recent years. Today we talk with our cell phones and even with our cars or the air conditioning at home. What has this relationship been like in the fire departments until now? And what is the current state of affairs? That is a good question. I've brought us a picture from the 1960s to illustrate just this relationship. We often hear that in the past, operation was much easier. When you look at this picture, that claim is really hard to believe. On the left, you see an airport fire truck from 1966. On the right, the pump control of a municipal vehicle. At that time, getting water out of the pump actually required a lot of knowledge. Levers had to be moved correctly at exactly the right time. This was also physically quite exhausting. In the 1980s, mechanical cable poles were replaced by electrical systems. Pictured on the top left is the AT1, already with a clear color code that we have today. The electrical system has simplified so many things. First automations and time controls could be realized with relay circuits. The component of physical strain was thus eliminated. New technology has allowed us for more features, which were also in high demand by our customers. This in turn has led to more complicated operation. We can see this development quite clearly in the top right picture of a NATO vehicle in Geilenkirchen. About 20 years ago, we started to install the first electronics in our vehicles. In 2005, there were also first efforts to create a standardized system, the LCS 1.0. On the two photos on the bottom, you can see membrane keys on the panels, which were already used in several vehicle series. But it was always difficult to deliver the vehicles in a really standardized way, because the development cycles were always different. For example, the current AT was presented in 2010, but the current Panther was not presented until 2015. This is why we have now largely removed the HMI from this cycle. Within the next few months, all vehicles will get a new user interface. By now, we have arrived at the third generation LCS. Our most important concern, harmonization across all series. But what do we mean by that? The logic control system should look and work the same in all Rosenbauer vehicles, as well as on the other Rosenbauer products. And it does so that every firefighter immediately feels at home and intuitively knows her or his way around the device, even if this particular product is operated for the first time. In this picture, for example, you see an AT or an MT here. The CT also fits seamlessly into the series, just like the Panther or the turntable ladder. I'm particularly proud of the rescue stairs, because here we've made the biggest leap in usability compared to the previous version. Another thing that might be unclear to some people, what does the RBC stand for? And what are the components of the logic control system? Here's a quick overview. RBC stands for Rosenbauer Body Components. In other words, parts that are used in other Rosenbauer products. All the logic is located in the electronic modules. They are connected via a CAN, or Community Area Network, and therefore connect the mechanical components with the control units. External displays are the external tank display to show the different levels in the water tank and the foam tank. Then we have the traffic direction system which is mounted on the rear of the vehicle. The digipot is a very important element because it allows you to easily adjust the pump pressure with the turn-push switch. With regard to the keypads, there is a version with two keys, for instance, for operating the electric roller shutter. There is also a version with five keys, 
which I brought along today and will show you later. And in the picture, you see the 15-button panel as a radio remote control version. The LCS Compact is our most frequently used element. The box houses a small display, a digipod, and comparatively simple electronics. It is used for technical equipment such as the Fox, the RS-14, or the new CAFS Cube. In addition, the LCS Compact is used for pump control in vehicles that don't have any other electronics in their setup. We make displays in three different sizes. Here you see our smallest, 3.5-inch display. It is mostly used where space is very limited or where only limited data needs to be displayed. The 10-inch display is the display of choice for most vehicles. I have already shown you how it looks in the different vehicles. It has quite extraordinary technical specifications. The display has an HD resolution and extremely high brightness. The 17-inch display is currently only found inside the RT. This display is also used for mission planning and therefore needs to be particularly large and must have a wide viewing angle. This way, the entire crew can see what is shown on the display. Well, I think that's it with the cold facts. Now I'll show you live and up close what makes the new LCS so special. First of all, there are the keys and the question. Touch keys or real push keys. We conducted a survey with men and women between the ages of 16 and 72 from six different countries. They worked in voluntary fire departments and in professional, and some in-house fire departments. The result, depending on the situation and preference, some favored touch keys and some real push keys. We have, of course, taken this into account and installed the panels accordingly. Here with the 10-inch display, all functions can be operated by touch as well as by push keys. The 17-inch display in the RT is a pure touch screen. All functions that are usually operated while driving can also be found on the steering wheel controls. Especially the buttons have now been greatly improved. You can clearly see the evolution throughout the LCS generations. In the first generation, we had a simple membrane keyboard. For the second generation in 2010, we used resin doming to emphasize the keys. Now with the third generation, we've again made use of a technological innovation. We used 3D printing to create a frame around each key, with which you feel the keystroke much better, a point that was often criticized by our customers in the resin doming version. The improved visibility of the feedback LED is extremely important. If there is no display, I get important information here. If the warning lights button flashes, it means that this button wants to be pressed. This is the logical first step for an operation. When the button has been pressed, the light will blink faster, which indicates that the function has been requested. If the activation was successful, the LED lights up, like now. Of course, every key is back illuminated, so you can find it when it's dark. And with this keypad, we can put any function on any key, if the customer gives us precise specifications. The keys on the 10-inch display are practically the same. The main difference is that in the 10-inch, every keystroke not only initiates specific function, but also opens a display image. In general, the color code is quite striking. The goal was to make it as intuitive as possible. The operator should understand the operating modes at a glance and immediately know what is happening. Therefore, we stick to a clear color code. For example, the dark green stands for normal pressure, yellow for foam, and light blue for unpressurized water. So when you see a button, you immediately know which subject area the button signifies. And since we're already on the subject of colors, intuition, and quick situation assessment, let me quickly show you the various indicators and warnings. We have created easy-to-understand escalation levels. Here you see the message that the next maintenance service is due. I should get this message, of course, but at the same time, it should not distract from the actual operation. The wrench symbol instantly shows me that the message is directed to the service team. It is not relevant to the firefighting operation. The indicators take priority. If someone presses the turret quick stop now, this message will be displayed. 
The indicators are designed to support the operation. Even more important are the warnings. These are messages that have a significant effect on the vehicle or the operator. If immediate action is required, a large message is displayed, like this cavitation warning here. Finally, stop messages take top priority. The red color also indicates the need for immediate action. It's best to stop the operation immediately. We don't usually do this automatically, because there's always the golden rule. I'd rather destroy my machine than, for example, let a firefighter go on with an interior attack without water. In the past, I often heard that especially the older generation of firefighters is afraid of the display because everything seems so complicated, but just the opposite is the case. The display gives us the opportunity to guide the users. When they've started the pump, for example, we can open the specific page for them where they can open the outlets, if they are electro-pneumonic. The messages are extremely helpful because they show why something is not working and you don't just have a seemingly non-functional button in front of you. Of course, a display with its different pages allows many features that otherwise could only be provided with a huge switch panel. For some operations, these features are especially important, but we've made sure that the standard situations can be handled with only a few simple keystrokes. If you are driving to an operation site in the middle of the night and maybe haven't been inside your vehicle for a while, there's no reason to expect you to remember any special setting in some sub-menu or other. Here, for example, are the elements that you would normally find on the screen in the driver's cabin. Respond, at scene, cancel all. Then you go to the back of the vehicle, press start to start the pump, foam for the foam menu, and foam again to start the system with the pre-selected settings. All right, Severin, thank you for your presentation. Let me try to do a quick recap. Tell me if I got it right. Okay, will do. Rosenbauer's new logic control system is the same in all Rosenbauer vehicles and is also used in other devices, such as the Fox or the RS-14. There are three display sizes for different operations. The keys are both haptic and touch keys. There is a clear color code as well as a clear indication and warning system. And the one-touch panel lets you carry out standardized processes with just the touch of one button. Exactly. I have nothing to add. Great. Thank you, Severin, for this illuminating presentation of the logic control system. And thank you, dear viewers, for watching. Further information about the LCS is now available on Rosenbauer.com. Our experts are also available to answer your questions in the chat room. See you next time. Take care.